Hello and welcome to 99th Monkey News. Today is Wednesday, November 6th, 2013, and it's the day after Election Day in many parts of the country. So let's just take a quick look. I, there are other uh, aspects of the election, other races that I'm not covering. I just picked a couple here. RT Washington votes against GMO labeling, preliminary results. This article is from today, so it's likely that, that those results are accurate. And this is unfortunate. Uh, Tuesday's ballot saw 35 counties out of 39 vote against the legislation backed by environmentalists. So California did the same thing. It's uh, the, the the big companies that have a lot of money to spend on these uh, election campaigns know right when to sweep in and hammer everybody with commercials and people tend to, it, it's really, you know, one of the things that's most disturbing about our country is actually something that is, you know, we're nice people, we're trusting, uh, but bad people can easily take advantage of nice people who are trusting. So somehow we have to learn how to question what we see in television commercials and not believe everything that people tell us. The other race was the race, the Virginia governor race between Cuccinelli and McAuliffe. This one caught, really caught my interest I, and I hope that it's not a bellwether. Um, again, a lot of money was spent, a lot of resources were thrown at this by McAuliffe, and he had backing from the Clintons and Obama. Uh, Cuccinelli, on the other hand, according to this Breitbart article, Cuccinelli campaign says national GOP abandoned them. Quote, we were our own, end quote. And here are the actual results in a chart. And this is uh, just from the newspaper. Uh, the Virginia Hatch, complete results for Virginia election 2013 governor race. We have a winner. 4%, Cuccinelli 45.5%, and Sarvis, who was the libertarian candidate, 6.6%. I noticed late in the day yesterday, or sometime in the middle of the day, I guess, Ron Paul asked people, libertarians, to vote for Cuccinelli. I, I'm wondering, you know, it's hard to read these things sometimes. Is this to teach libertarians not to vote for the third party candidate? Alex Jones mentioned yesterday in passing that about 60% of Americans say that they are libertarians. So it follows that if we could have some uh, some good libertarian candidates and from that source we should be able to have some good people who would be good candidates. With reasonable amount of backing they should be able to win. Now it, that's what it looks like on the surface. Uh, the reality is like like the GMO labeling in Washington State. People want safe food and most a lot of people don't want to eat GMOs. What they once they understand what GMOs are, they most people don't want to eat them. Would prefer to not have them in the food supply. But these when a lot of money gets thrown at people, they become baffled and they will vote the way that the commercials tell them to vote. So that's only really only one aspect of this, but a significant aspect. Uh, will it be possible at some point for us to have libertarian candidates who do something other than just pull votes away from the Republican candidate? Another aspect of this race that I've found interesting, and as I said, I, this is personally interesting to me for some reason, and and I think it's because it, there, there are broader implications here, and that's why I'm, why I'm bringing it in to this discussion. 
Cuccinelli beat McCullough 51% to 42% among women who are married. A big issue in this race was something that I touched on, uh, I think it was, well, yeah, it was last week, that Cuccinelli, as the Attorney General for the state of Virginia, had been arguing to uphold an old statute that uh, prevents certain sex acts and he said that he wanted to keep the statute in place because it was used to prosecute pedophiles. So a, a lot of the attack on Cuccinelli had to do with you know saying that he was opposed to sexual freedom and some of it had to do, I mean, that, that abortion always comes into that mix. But so, you would think that women, I mean, the cr battle cry is always don't tell us to do what to do with our bodies, right? Uh, but women voted for Cuccinelli. Maybe, you know, most women don't really want to have these uh, sexual mores loosened even further. At least, you know, keep, keep some of the laws in place. Of course, probably, ideally, that law should be overhauled and make have it be more specific about uh, pedophiles. But I think he was trying to do the right thing, although I'm not absolutely sure. It's hard to read these, these people in these situations sometimes. And, uh, and another issue that is touched by this from Hot Air, Terry McAuliffe totally on board with more gun control for Virginia. They are probably going to have tightened gun laws in that state. What might that mean for them? Blacklisted News has this article, DC averaged one gunshot incident every two hours for the past eight years. And of course, uh, the District of Columbia does not allow, well, they have very strict gun laws, I'll just put it that way. And, you know, this tends to happen where there are uh, anti-Second Amendment laws in place. You lose this, this you know, first basic level of protection and, uh, and threat, quite honestly, that, that uh, there's always the possibility that uh, someone will be armed, and that is a huge deterrent to criminals. But, you know, just consider this where guns are illegal. D.C. averaged one gunshot incident every two hours for the past eight years. That is a lot of gunshot incidents, and Washington, D.C. is not even, you know, it's not, it's not a state. I mean, it's, it's basically a large city. Moving on, uh, 56 million babies condemned to painful deaths, a bold, aggressive campaign. This is a video from Rand Paul, and it is connected to a petition. Uh, they are introducing a bill that would define life as beginning at conception. And uh, this petition will help to promote that initiative. Benjamin Fulford's blog was late this week, but it is a very interesting one. Multiple sources say the Pentagon is moving to shut down the cabal. And uh, if you can if you get a chance to read this blog, the whole thing's interesting. But I, there's one aspect of it that I want to focus on, and that is that Benjamin Fulford claims in this blog that the good U.S. military are planning to shut down the power grid, the electrical grid, and they'll, they'll reboot it uh, but they do, they just want to start over with a clean slate. They want to be able to shut some things down. They want to be able to limit the uh, bought, bought and paid for media. And uh, like I said, they just they want to be able to hit the reset button. Normally, I'm not sure I would 
take that claim all that seriously, and I'm not absolutely sure I take it very seriously. Anyway, however, Karen Hughes on Facebook also shared uh, uh, information that she believes that the planet Nibiru is going to pass closely to, I think it's the planet Mercury, and that that is going to set off an, an electronic disturbance that will create an EMP that has potential to shut down the grid. I I don't I don't believe in Nibiru and all. I think that those are all fear tactics generally. Here's what's interesting: the date that she stated it's very likely that an EMP could take place based on those events is November 13th, and she works closely with Pentagon people and uh, governors of various states and she, she's she's networked she's she's well connected she knows what's going on and I, I I wondered if it's possible that she knows that the electrical grid is going to be taken down by the good military but that she doesn't want to actually say that publicly because it's might tend to alarm people uh, un unduly I don't know you know we like to tell people the truth, but uh, it is it is a, a lot to swallow if the military were going to do something like that. So I was wondering if perhaps what Benjamin Fulford is exposing as a move on behalf of the good military, she perhaps is uh, presenting as something that it happens from natural causes, just to kind of take the edge off. In either case, I'm not 100% buying either one. In fact, I'm maybe probably less than 60%. But at the same time, having some extra provisions on hand and being prepared is always a good idea. And of course, praying for justice and righteousness. Here is a YouTube video from RT, The Net, Super Rich get super highways, we get dirt roads. This is about uh, the basically internet freedom uh, that some of the big companies are trying to uh, impose controls that would allow them to uh, actually you know promote websites that they favor and make it difficult if not impossible to access websites they don't favor or have them load more slowly. David Icke is, uh, has an article, The Money Changers Rothschild Banking Dynasty Said to Be Worth $100 Trillion. That's just a little item of interest I happen to notice. thought you might enjoy having that bit of knowledge. Here from Huffington Post, Today's drug war outrage, man dies in jail cell after misdemeanor pot offense. Yesterday, of course, was the Million Mask March for Justice, and although they evidently did not get a whole lot of mainstream media coverage, I, it looks, if you look at some of the photos and videos, uh, it looks like they had a great time. Here's a, these are from, these are actually from London, and the comedian Russell Brand was pictured among the crowds of people wearing a Guy Fox mask. So, yeah, I, I think, I think they had a good time, and I, uh, I think they made a point. I mean, even just for them, even if it doesn't get in the large mainstream media outlets, they were there. They know how many people share their views, and that in itself is encouraging. Campaign for Liberty has this article, the USA Freedom Act, a step in the right direction. And you may have heard a little bit about this. Two of the guys who helped craft the Patriot Act, well, they were supporters of the Patriot Act, uh, and Sensenbrunner himself authored the now infamous legislation, which is the ultimate culprit of this whole surveillance mess we now find ourselves in. These, these men 
have teamed up to try to limit the powers of the NSA through the USA Freedom Act. So thanks to them, and uh, if you think of it, pray for them, and ask God for justice and restoration of a constitutional republic that is ruled by the rule of law. And uh, this, this is a video, a Glenn Beck video, Obama's ex-bodyguard scandals, quote, worse than you know. Former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, quote, it's to the point where these Obama scandals in and of themselves would be huge breaking scandals are just lost in the scandal fog of this administration. He said in disbelief, it's worse than people know. I'm not trying to scare you either. Our good news of the day comes from Natural News. And the good news is that choosing a Mediterranean diet increases odds of living to an old age by more than 40 percent. Hmm. Mediterranean diet. Looks yummy, doesn't it? It's a nice uh, salad with veggies and, of course, the Mediterranean diet includes wine and probably feta cheese. So I'm good with that. And with that happy thought of wine and feta cheese and fresh veggies, thank you for tuning in for today's news. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hoping that you will love one another, take care, and insist on liberty.